our soldiers fighting overseas are journalists embedded with them. It can be dangerous, as we were reminded on Monday, when two suicide bombers struck Afghanistan's capital, killing 25 people, including nine journalists. Journalist Carmen Gentile covered the war in Afghanistan and knows the dangers of war all too well. Please watch this, please. I first started reporting from Afghanistan in 2005. You're spending uh, all your, your waking and sleeping hours with soldiers sometimes in remote combat outposts with very few amenities, and it's dangerous. But it's some of the best reporting I think I've ever done because you get an opportunity to really spend uh, a lot of time with a small group of people. It's important to, to hear from these people and try to explain to the vast majority of Americans who don't serve what it is they're doing and what they're going through. They're really paranoid down here because we don't get to make it down here as much as we'd like to. It was September 9th, 2010. I was at a remote combat outpost in Kunar province near the Pakistani border. And we were on a foot patrol in a small village called Gui. It was the last day of Ramadan. I stopped to talk to some young men sitting by the side of the road, and already I had a pretty hinky feeling about what was going on there. One of the telltale signs of when something's gonna go wrong is when the kids scatter. All the kids, the little ones ran away. So I was talking to these guys, and I just had this, this, this feeling creeping up in me. And as I was shooting video, um, while talking to them, I saw their eyes get really bright, and then I heard this whooshing sound. And just down the road, about 40 yards away, there was a man shouldering a, an RPG launcher, and I turned to look at him, and the conical tip of the thing was screaming right at me. And it just smacked me in the side of the head and didn't detonate. I was uh, immediately blinded in my right eye, and all the bones in the side of my face uh, were crushed. And immediately I thought, well, that doesn't seem right, that there's no way that I'm still alive. Wow. Carmen's written a book about his life and his experiences in Afghanistan and his remarkable perseverance. It is called Blindsided by the Taliban, a journalist's story of war, trauma, love, and loss. Carmen, welcome. Thank you. It's unbelievable, the story. I know, it, I know it's difficult for you to watch that tape. Yeah, I've only seen it once all the way through. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, and that's something I talk about in my book, uh, that experience. And uh, I've tried to have a, a good sense of humor about it. And that's what's uh, sustained me uh, while I was injured and the, and the recovery and, the, and the, uh, in the years that have followed that uh, all you can do is laugh sometimes. But, to, but, but the, the book paints a harrowing picture of the moments before. I mean, you're, you write in a very compelling and descriptive way about that moment that is caught on tape. That's, his, that's him shooting his story with the three guys sitting there. Um, and then looking down the road, and you write, a green rocket is screaming right for me. A few seconds of mayhem shatters into a million distinct moments of dread as I watch my approaching death. Time slows down. I go from anguish to acceptance of my fate in a single breath. And then the rocket hit you square in the no. face. Yeah. How many surgeries happened after that? I had a total of four surgeries. Uh, one immediately after I was injured, I was uh, taken out by some very brave uh, men called pararescue jumpers in a helicopter and flown to a military base in Afghanistan where an uh, on-staff military ophthalmologist immediately operated on my eye and was able to uh, save it. Uh, they didn't think that they were going to uh, at first. They told me I was, when I woke up from that first surgery, they said, you're probably going to lose that eye. And, and orbital sh sh uh, All the bones in my face were, were fractured. Uh, this side of my face was, was completely shattered. And I've uh, had uh, the subsequent uh, operations that I've had uh, required 12 pins and four plates that are still in my face, holding it together. The story of what you went through is gripping, but the story of who you are is more <laughs> gripping. And you write very honestly in the book about you, you know, enjoyed some Oxycontin uh, in the, in the yeah. wake of that injury, yeah. as you yeah. should have. Yeah. Um, but that you had a history of heroin abuse, of adrenaline pursuit. Right. And even while your face is recovering, when you're really not supposed to be doing anything, <laughs> going surfing, going diving, going off-road motorbiking, <laughs> going whitewater rafting. Oh, my doctor's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to say I know. And, and, 
there's that's the theme throughout the book is that you are somebody who needs this. You, you get the Jones off of danger, right? Yes, I have to admit that that is uh, uh, maybe a tragic flaw in my character. Um, I'm trying to curtail it more now that I have a daughter who's two years old mm -hmm. and I have to be a lot more responsible. I have more than just myself to think about. But yes, it's it's still there. There was a day um, about a year or so after your injury that mm -hmm. you were back stateside and a box arrived. <laughs> I had um, everything, all my personal effects and my uh, camera gear and computer had been boxed up and uh, by the military and sent back to me. I was, uh, had undergone two more surgeries back here in New York, and this box arrived at the apartment where I was recovering, and two men brought it in, and it just sat there in my apartment for, for two weeks. I just couldn't bring myself to open it because I just, I knew that there were a lot of boogeymen in that box, and... Um, I uh, finally worked up the nerve to open it and to see what was in it, the, you know, the remnants of my previous life. And uh, the first thing I realized is that it smelled awful because it had all my dirty clothes in it that had been <laughs> fermenting in this box for, for what was about a month at that point. And then I um, you know, started to pick through it. And uh, I found my video camera, the camera on which I, I shot that video. And I still couldn't bring myself to look at it. It took me several months to finally sit down with a friend and um, go over that footage because I wasn't sure I caught it. And then when I, I, I saw it, it, yeah, it, it was like really uh, experiencing it all over again. But what happened after that, what happened after Carmen watched that videotape uh, is the most shocking part of this story. That's after the break. We're back now with journalist Carmen Gentile, who has written about his amazing story of survival after being hit in the face with a rocket-propelled grenade while he was covering the war in Afghanistan. So, Carmen, you... Um, you watch the tape, and then you write about going to climb mountains in Bolivia and surfing the big waves and going to Haiti during the violent coup, and write, still, I wasn't satisfied. Nothing seemed to come close to the rush of potential violence and self-destruction, and so I became depressed. And so you did what? Went back to Afghanistan. <laughs> How many times? Uh, since I uh, recovered from my injury, I've been back six times. I know, I'm torturing my parents. <laughs> right. And, but this is something you, you need to do it, because you write about how when you tried to stay and cover domestic st stories, you were, quote, suffocating in your own mediocrity and boredom. <laughs> there is something in you, and you talk about how not only does it make you do all these crazy things, like go back to Afghanistan mm -hmm. six times after being shot in the face, but cheat on several girlfriends and I mean yeah. your life has been tumultuous yes I uh, you know after I got hurt I felt like I deserved all this special attention and that I had it coming to me because of my injuries and that uh, I soon discovered uh, within three months of, of being hurt that I had burned through all the goodwill that I thought I had earned and everyone was just sick of dealing with me because I wasn't being very nice to others or be considerate of their feelings um, because I was wallowing in my own, um, you know. I think you're entitled to a, w a wallow yeah, when you're but shot you in the face with an RPG. You shouldn't do it at the expense of others, and I felt really bad about that. Well, it, the truth is you weren't always treated that well by the girlfriends either. The fiancé didn't sound exactly supportive after you got shot. No, not really. We had a, we had a falling out right after I uh, got hurt, and uh, we ended up breaking up right before my first major surgery here in New York. You, you were going through a lot, but you talk about your recognition of your compulsion towards risk, the, the senseless chances you've taken, like helmetless rides at night on a motorcycle through Miami. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and, say, and say, what really scares me, more than getting my legs blown off or getting shot again, is that one day the wrong side of this struggle is going to win. My greatest fear is me. Still? Yeah, I think that's something that I still struggle with, and I'm always going to struggle with it. But I have greater responsibilities uh, and concerns than my own, um, you know, pervasive woe. I have a two-year-old daughter now, and that that. And you makes, did find love. And I do. I'm married now, and I have a and I have a wonderful uh, family and a and a wonderful daughter. And I have to be um, less concerned about my own, you know, existential crises, and and think more about them and it's particularly my and my daughter of course are we done going future. to afghanistan or 
No. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't do the same things that I, that I used to do. I, well, okay, for example, I was just in Iraq last week, and I was there uh, looking at um, the aftermath of the fighting that had taken place, and I was in the city of Mosul, and, and uh, the destruction there is some of the worst I've ever seen. But I don't take the same kind of risks that I used to. Um, I try to think, okay, is this a calculated risk? Or is this a, a foolish risk? I tell you, I try to take calculated risks. Even as a domestic journalist, you think about that kind of thing when sure. you have children. But uh, I admire your courage. And it's also service. It's service to the country, and it's, an important, it's important work. So God bless you. Good luck you. to you and your wife and your child. Thank you. All the best. All the best to you. Wow. Again, the book, which is well worth your time, is Blindsided by the Taliban. Unbelievable. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.